Look, that that that's where we're going to use the Patreon money for is to get you a better mic. <laughs> well, it's to get you a better I'm, mic. Now okay. I'm recording. It's 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 to, it's to get Liam a better mic and to send me to engineering yeah. school so uh, people complain less about how my tangents are bad. Yes. Now now that we're all recording, we can say yes. Uh, Maker's Mark, please sponsor us. Uh, yes. We, we, please, we're all. Please. I've been to your distillery. We're all drinking it as we record uh, Astaghfirullah, yeah. incidentally, but... I'm actually drinking Makers 46. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, Mr. Fancy over here. No, I, 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 I'm I, drinking, like, regular Makers Mark, but I picked all of the wax off of the bottle as, like, a fidget <laughs> toy. If you go to a distillery, they let you dip the bottle in wax yourself. Oh, that sounds satisfying. Well, it's pretty damn cool. And, and you can screw it up like me and put way too much wax on the bottle. <laughs> it, on the on the bright side, it was very easy to identify which of your bottles, which of the yeah. bottles was just yours. This, just this single yeah. bottle shape under like a thing. Because it looked yeah. like a Jackson Pollock painting. Uh, the distillery is basically Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, but with bourbon. <laughs> I, I like this though. It adds to the general sort of like break room after work drinks vibe of this podcast. I think. Yes. All right. I guess we should do the podcast introduction. Hello and welcome to podcast. Uh, all right, welcome to Well, There's Your Problem, uh, a podcast about engineering disasters, which also has slides attached. Um, I'm Justin Rosnack. I'm, you know, one of the people here. I run a YouTube channel called Do Not Eat. If you're watching this, it should be the first episode on our new dedicated channel for the project, as opposed to just going on my YouTube channel. Yeah. So you'll see a new fancy, fancy environment. Uh... Maybe maybe we'll have advertisements on it. Maybe Dennis Prager just finished talking to you. I don't know. <laughs> Immediately demonetized. <laughs> uh, I'll jump in next. Uh, Alice Caldwell Kelly. I'm Alice Avazandam on Twitter. Um, I also am on a podcast called Trash Future. You should listen to that. It's very good. Uh, pronouns she and her. Once again. Finally, I am Liam Anderson. I. I am not especially funny on Twitter, uh, but I comment in our YouTube uh, comment section because the comments in there are absolute smoking fires. <laughs> They're just fucking horrible. Yeah, you, you make war on the comment section. You gotta be able to dish it out. I just, man, like, just please, it's, mm -hmm. it's so fucking tiring to read, like, 30 comments from 15-year-old fucking weirdos to be like, ah, <laughs> Duh, who, who, who's the English guy? It's just like, fuck it. You, you, you know what it is? We, we are an NHL team and you are our enforcer. <laughs> you are just like elbowing people into the boards. At one point, uh, Roz and I are in Toronto and mm. uh, a Hispanic man turned around and screamed the N-word at a very clearly white man. <laughs> and Roz turned to me and was like, I thought Leah was gonna, I thought you were gonna have to beat the shit out of somebody, and I was like, I was ready, and then I was just very yeah, it was, It's a very confusing situation. A YouTube comment section leaking into real life there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, pronouns are he, him. Uh, so if you want to get real mad at me in the YouTube comment section, uh, also, sorry about the tangents, but I'm not sorry. So I'm going to spend this entire episode going wildly off track. <laughs> Just tell us your theories about, like, Estonia. I have got some Estonia conspiracy theories ready to fucking go. Let's do this. I, I have a joke. I have a single joke. It's a Russian joke about the Estonian language. Uh, because Estonian doubles, like, a lot of its vowels, so Russians think they talk really slowly. So the joke is, there's two Estonian guys on a handcart, like the push thing, uh, and they're on the railroad, and the one Estonian guy says, Is it a long way to Tallinn? And the second guy says, Not far. And then they keep, like, pedaling in silence for two <laughs> hours. And then the first guy says, is it a long way to Tallinn? And the second guy says, Now it is a long way. The joke being that, uh, like most other countries, they just refuse to speak to each other. Yeah. Well, yes, that and they're pedaling in the wrong direction. Oh, oh. oh so, uh, Junior Finland is so nice. <laughs> All right, so as you, may, as you may know, oh, also, I forgot to mention my pronouns, which are he, him. Okay. So, today we're going to talk about boats. 
More spe- most specifically, uh, this boat, the MS Estonia, whose pronouns are she, boats. her. <laughs> Except in Russian. Uh, I don't know if you know that, but in Russian, uh, a huh. ship is a he. I didn't, no, I did know that, actually, because I took Russian, but I forgot it. Mm. So I, I, I don't know if this makes it like a trans mask king, or I don't I, know what. Well, maybe it identifies as male when it's when when she's in a Russian port. In yeah. Russia, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's like a gender fluid boat. I, we don't maybe, know. Not anymore. <laughs> I, I mean, a lot of problems. A lot of problems with the gender fluid. It, it's certainly boat. full of fluid now. Uh. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's let's start by talking about row row ferries, right? concept of a row row ferry fairly simple uh you roll on the ferry you drive your car on you roll off the ferry you drive your car off the other end right ideally not you know while well, there's like a ramp at the other end you don't just drive it off in the middle of the sea that'd be stupid tell what you do yeah you don't you, you don't just like put up when you say the ramp the ramp goes down yeah. onto a jetty rather than yeah. up into the air and you like duke the <laughs> that's a sweet the... air though yeah if we took if we took this exact boat uh, and I will say, for someone who has not taken many ferries, driving onto that thing in driving rain was top ten most terrifying oh, yeah. moments of my life. Because mm. I just like looked over at Roz, I was like, "All right, this is it. Into the sea we go. Fuck it. Like at least we'll be close." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, this is this is what you don't want to do is steer. Yeah, so this is uh, MV Blue Putties, which is on the uh, the service from North Sydney in Nova Scotia to uh, Port of Basque in Newfoundland. Why the fuck is it named after socks? Like a putty is a gator. Why is it? Uh, why? I have no idea. That's a it is a strange. It's a name very for strange a ship. name for a ship. That's the Canadians. So yeah, the bow opens up and cars drive up. There's also a second door on this particular ship, which is above the bow. Um, and one of the things about that is there, it you're with a hole below the bow like this. There's a little less extra risk involved. For like uh, the car deck flooding, right? And um, you know, mm-hmm. if if the car deck floods and the ship's loaded improperly and is like rolling in the ocean, it, it there's a high ca- uh, risk of the boat capsizing, right? Because of the the free surface effect, right? The water that gets into the car deck, if it does so, starts to slosh around, and that counteracts the boat's ability to right itself. It'll tend to keep listing in one direction. You're kind of spoiling our Herald of Free Enterprise episode, which is right after our Tacoma Narrows episode. <laughs> that that was uh, that was a more clear cut case of just uh, forgetting to close the doors in the first place. Well, you you, you don't yeah. want to do that. Um, yeah, that, that, that's that, ste- that's step one of having a ferry with a big door on it mm-hmm. is close the door. So, this is uh, this is why you know some some crews like they joke they call a row a row row ferry. Stands for not roll on, roll off, but roll on, roll over. <laughs> <laughs> and I chime in with a haven't you people ever heard of closing the goddamn door. Oh, very good. <laughs> so the MV Blue Putties here has a newer design. You can see the bow splits in two, sort of slides out of the way, right? And then the ramp comes down. And then, you know, ordinarily there'd be another ramp that connects to it here. You wouldn't just drive off and fall in the ocean. That'd be bad. Oh, that <laughs> attitude. So, but the ship we're talking about is the uh, MS Estonia, right? She had an older design. Mm-hmm. Um, Man, that's depressing. Right, Ooh. so the MS Estonia was built in 1980 as the uh, MV Viking Sally. Jesus. <laughs> which was designed for service on Baltic sea routes, right? I, I, I thought they gave the stupid names to, like, freight ships, mostly. And let the um, they let the passenger ships have like inspiring names. It's Paradise or Odyssey or yeah, 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 yeah. Dream, but no, you're in the Baltic Sea. There's no happiness. Nothing good is going to befall you. You're like fuck you. Uh, yeah, it, it's the MS Depression. <laughs> Eat shit. You, all of your countries have a, like an eighty percent suicide rates. Look, if you make it, that's all the paradise you need. We don't know <laughs> yeah. what you're mad about. Look at this fucking boat. Oh, God. I have a story, actually. When I went to St. Petersburg the first time, I was in the hotel, and I was looking out over the Baltic, and this entirely naked man just jogged up to the Baltic, which was rimmed with ice, and just jumped in there. And for a solid ten minutes until I saw his head pop up, I had no idea if he was exercising or killing himself. I'm not sure if he did. <laughs> 
That's the most Russian thing I've ever fucking yes. heard in my life. Yes. I remember being in St. Petersburg when I was uh, younger, and the whole city, like, I, you know, I was out on my own venturing, exploring, mm-hmm. and there were, there were, like, a group of what I think were Spanish tourists, just the drunkest I've ever seen anybody, and it's, like, 9.45 a.m. <laughs> I'm all, like, bright-eyed and excited, and I'm just, like, aghast. Yeah. <laughs> just, like, oh my goodness, what's happened here? Also, blue putties apparently derives from a World War One, uh, the Newfoundland Regiment. Ah, uh, huh. Because because we loved in the Commonwealth just giving people weird socks and shit. I'm gonna have to wear my Anzac Memorial socks. The Estonia was built in West Germany for a Finnish ferry company, right? And it was sold to Estline, which was an Estonian ferry company, uh, in 1993. So two years or so after the breakup of the Soviet Union, right? Yes, yeah. I can blame this on capitalism. Uh, sort of. <laughs> so, the crew of this boat, you know, they're they're ex-Soviet Union guys, right? Um, oh, know, God. So they, they have a, a certain attitude about how ferries should be run. Um, <laughs> and, of course, this is an older design, uh, you know, for the, op- for the front of the ferry, right? There's this visor here, which yeah. opens up. Right, and then the actual watertight part is the door that also serves as the ramp, right? I, I that, that that makes sense, right? Yeah. Like there's there's a there's Jesus hull Lord. around that door on four sides, so it just seals nicely into yes. the thing, right? Increases downforce. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big spoiler, big lip spoiler. Yeah, perfect. Makes perfect but there, sense. But you can yeah. sort of see how a problem might develop with with this visor, maybe. No, I can't. Nothing nope. Nothing can go wrong with this. No, that looks great. <laughs> All right. So, on Tuesday, September 27th, 1994, MS Estonia set out for Stockholm from uh, the ferry terminal in Tallinn. Tallinn. Thank you. With the, du- with the doubled and tripled vowel <laughs> sounds. Is that what that's for? Yeah. It's literally just because they fucking talk much slower in Estonia. Man, the the Estonians are gonna hate us after this one. Just lose all all of the Estonian viewers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look, I'm I'm sure that they can like content themselves with their like ninety percent free public Wi-Fi and like healthcare and shit and like that. Free mass transit. Yeah, free mass, free mass yeah. transit. I'm so salty about. Congratulations, uh-huh. Estonia. You're 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 Fucking doing terrific. Bastards, yeah. sons yeah. of bitches. <laughs> Tallinn is beautiful. But yeah, all, fuck all, you. all we've got is the vowel sounds, and the vowel sounds stupid. So there's 989 people on board this ship. 803 are passengers, and 186 are crew. Now, when they when they set out, there was a slight starboard list to the to the boat because of bad loading. Now, starboard is the right side of the boat. As you're facing forward, mm-hmm. uh, just yeah, no red port left yes. in the bottle. Is that is that how you remember it? Yeah, that that that's the mnemonic. Is uh, port is a red light and it's on the left hand side facing ah, towards shit, the bow. Not... Look, look, I was I was gonna be I was gonna be a navy officer when I grew up, and then I d- decided to do this instead. Uh, when I was in high school, I used to row like the bougie kids, because I guess mm. I was one. And I, I always got port and starboard confused, even though I was in a boat every single goddamn day. <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask you multiple times which direction was which when we were yeah. on the boats. So I, uh, I'm not a seafaring man. Yeah. Every time I'm on a boat, I'm just really kind of confused. Why is the floor moving? It's, it's depressing that I'm the naval expert on this one. Uh, but I, I, by default, that is true. I, having read more Wikipedia articles about naval battles, I'm looking at this like course that you've put up, and I'm just like, well, that's weird, but it's actually not that weird. <laughs> I, I, I made this up. I thought it'd be funny to put a little loop in. <laughs> genuinely, genuinely, if you look up like any um, sort of naval engagement, all of the course charts look like that. Like there will just be a bunch of weird serpentines, gravity boost, oh. or something. So you're kind of like accidentally more more right than you know. Anyway, um, so when they set out, it was bad weather in the Baltic Sea, right? But it's normal bad weather, as some other folks so uh, who, Baltic sea. who were on other boats said. 10 to 13 foot waves winds 30 to 40 knots you know it's not pleasant but it's not gonna it's not gonna kill you right 
Yeah, it's 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 a miserable sea, and I say that as someone from Scotland. All of our sea locks are like this too. It, it's just it's not a nice place to sail at any time of year. Passengers who survived the sinking said that the ship was being driven pretty hard to make up uh, make up time, make sure they got to Stockholm on time, right? Because most ships would slow down in heavy weather like this for uh, passenger comfort, right? And so people would spend more time and money mm. in the ship's bars and restaurants, you know? Um, you know, yeah. rather than rather than go below deck and sort of be miserable in your cabin and, I don't know, vomit a couple times. So, yeah, this is a very yeah. Soviet way of... of yeah, uh... you, you have the target, and you have to meet the target, and the commercial imperative isn't there, but the productivity one <laughs> is. Love, love state yeah. capitalism. Just to be like, yes, we absolutely have to get there on time... No, nothing else, like, nothing else factors into that, though. Yeah, so they said, we make good schedule, like good Soviet boat, right? So, you know, they, they mm-hmm. keep going yeah. as fast as they goddamn can through, through, the, through the storm and the heavy seas and Just so on and so some, forth. Some poor, inexplicably Scottish chief engineer pointing out that you can't push it any further, <laughs> Captain. Oh, well, they're going to push it further. I wonder what the Scot. I wonder what the Soviet equivalent of a Scotsman is. Uh, Siberian. Some guy from the steppe. Ah, uh, possibly. Yeah. Or an yeah. Uzbek. Yeah, Uzbeks are fucking wild. Mm. Hello to our three Uzbek wow. listeners. Hello, and uh, like, congratulations on being the only Muslims who drink more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> there's um, there's a there's a story really quickly in Adil Ahmed's Islam after communism in Central America, where he goes to this workers' cafeteria in Uzbekistan, and they're like, "Hey, a Muslim? That's amazing. Let's have a drink to celebrate." <laughs> I love that. I. Uh... As an aside, uh, I lived in York, Pennsylvania for a while. Not the most progressive place on earth. Shout out to my parents. The Uzbekistan of Pennsylvania. It fuck it is. We got we got weird ass Cold War era nuclear plants that sometimes do and sometimes don't work. Uh, but so, you know, Yom Kippur, you fast. Uh, but to the, the 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 grocery store near my parents' house every single year when I was a kid had uh, uh, like boxes of matzah. And containers of gefilte fish uh, for your Yom Kippur favorites, and uh, that not quite, fellas, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> we like told them more than once, and they were like, "Oh, well, like, but we're making the effort." And it's like, "Yeah, maybe yeah, just, just don't, don't make the effort. Just, no. <laughs> uh, just, just yeah, don't, just, just, just fucking leave us alone." Around one a.m. in the morning, there was a big bang that everyone who was awake heard. Why? Just, just say 1 a.m. Just say no, 1 a.m. I say 1 a.m. in the morning for emphasis. It was very early in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Just so, just so you know that yeah. it was, yeah, as opposed to oh, the 1 p.m. Exactly. Fuck the both of you. Look, Fuck the both of you. Look, I hate this it's, shit. It's, it's, do you know how far north the Baltic is? You can have a 1 p.m. Yes, in the middle of true, the night. Yeah. Yes, yes, but for 500 fucking miles in New Brunswick, he and my dad just constantly said 3 a.m. in the morning, just just in the yeah. middle of the night. So I was pissed off Look, and tired, and I had to pee. It, it, the sunrise right now where I am is like 2 p.m., and sunset is 4 p.m. <laughs> yeah, move south. That's not my fault. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, why, why don't they just move? The Harlan County of, um, of uh, the United Kingdom. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we have like we have loss yeah. here, right? Like just in six panels. Yeah, kind of, of loss. Yeah. yeah. So uh, after the everyone hears the big bang, who was awake? There's a guy on the car deck who checks the bow. He says, "The Zenka." Yeah, yeah, it looks good. He goes back to report to the bridge. <laughs> As it's falling, and he it's says, insane. "Yeah, it looks good." And there's a second big bang, right? So they send him back down to check again, and he never comes back. Promising. <laughs> that's that's Promising. not a great yeah, sign. Yeah. So the. The ship was heaving in heavy seas, right? So the locks okay. holding the um, the bow in place or the visor failed, right? That's just like a couple of like Samsonite TSA padlocks. Yeah, probably. Right? <laughs> it's just like, the, oh, we put a chain on yeah, it. It's fine. fine. It's like a really Secure. good chain. So, you know. So anyway, now it's, you know, it's heaving up and down in the seas, right? And it keeps, you know, since they're going up and down, it's banging into the ocean and all this crap, right? Mm. You know, it's it's just swinging freely at this point. Uh, around 1.15 in the morning, Free balling. Uh, the front fell off. Yeah. Ah, the, the, the part of the boat where the front is falls yeah. off. Weight reduction. 
Oh, uh, and, you know, there's nobody around to tow it out of the environment, so... You know, the visor falls off and damages the door as it goes, right? And so plenty of ships have suffered pretty bad damage like this, you know, and they sort of limped back to port. And at this point, the Estonia's... Mm -hmm. Well, Herald of Free Enterprise almost did. Like, it had the door open, but it wasn't until they pushed it up to maximum speed that the water actually got into the yeah. car deck. Yeah, it's an embarrassing accident right there, because it was like, what, five minutes oh, out? Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> it's like, that's that's not good. Yeah, th 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 this looks much more competent. Yeah, so, now at this point, uh, Estonia is not very far from land. It's about 25 miles offshore from the, uh, you know, the Finnish archipelago, you know, like the, all those islands out there in the Baltic Sea. Um and, you know, if, if, if this were any other kind of ship, they would have easily made it back. But Estonia is a row-row ferry, and any amount of water that gets on the car deck is a major issue. By, like, one twenty in the morning, the ship's already listed fi 15 degrees to starboard, right? We, we should say that the reason why that's bad is because uh, about the turn of the 20th century, we figured out how to compartmentalize so that water doesn't just, like, s splash around through the whole length of the boat. And you can't do that with a car deck, because it has to go the whole length, so people can drive into it. Yes. So it's just this, it's, it's this long void in, like, the bottom of the ship. Which is exactly where you want it. That makes the most sense. Yes, of course. They sound the alarm at 1.20 in the morning. They send a mayday at 1.22. Um, but by this time, the the list is rapidly increasing, right? And there's... People inside are panicking, uh, you know, and the crowding in the hallways prevents a lot of passengers from leaving their cabins, let alone getting to the upper decks. Uh, the ship loses power pretty soon. List continues to worsen. By 1.30, it's 60 degrees. By 1.50, it's 90 degrees over. It's on its side. The funnel's in the water. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't know, just for context, listing is... It, it tilts. It yeah. shouldn't do that. It's, it's bad. It's very bad. Uh... We, we don't love to see it. Yeah, it's not good. It's also worth noting that uh, because it listed so quickly and the flooding uh, like prevented people from getting to the boat deck, uh, water also came in through windows in cabins as well as the windows along deck six, mm -hmm. uh, which gave way to the water, and then the sea reached the upper decks, and water, flew, water flowed down from basically everywhere and just kind of forced it down faster yeah, i mean th that's one of the most nightmarish things about this there's a long article about this that i will probably put in the description once i find it um but because it just sort of flattened onto its side some of the people who survived never even got their feet wet because they could just walk across the hole that was like up in the open air and on what is their floor are all of these portholes full of cabins full of people who are like trying to grab up at them that can't reach them so it's it's horrifying and don't forget that uh, the Mayday communicated at 122 didn't follow the international format for Mayday. No, it, it was just it was it was a Soviet Mayday, which was like everything is fine, but if it's not hypothetically, <laughs> uh... yeah, they also lost power, so just everything that could go wrong basically did go wrong. Just as a, 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 a Soviet Mayday is like, uh, we're pleased to announce that we've uh, fulfilled our targets for the five-year plan of listing in an hour and a half. Please send uh, our our greetings to the premier yes. as we go right it, into it, the it, water. In the, form of, <laughs> in the form of several rescue boats. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, the evacuation of the ship was pretty clumsy and very difficult, and it started way too late. And that late alarm, you know, people got trapped in their cabins, passengers got trapped in corridors mm. that basically turned into vertical shafts as the boat continued to list. Yeah. It's it, it's it's that bit in Inception where the hallway turns, but with an extra dimension yes. added. It is absolutely, and I say this with no trace of metaphor, nightmarish. Yeah, there's an article in the Atlantic which we may be talking about the same That's one. The yeah, one. I'll link that yes. in the description if yeah. you if you want a real vivid uh, description of what happened. Uh, content warning: you won't want to go on a row row ferry after you read it. <laughs> no. Uh, so the ship was lifting, listing far enough they couldn't uh, launch the lifeboats. Um, mm -hmm. Because the lifeboats are on davits, uh, right? Um, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's like a crane. Like, it sticks out horizontally. 
and it has the lifeboat on it and you drop the lifeboat into the uh. water. But if it's listing, either the davit is underwater so you can't do it, or it's just going to hit the hole on the other side and it's just going to smash the lifeboat in half. Right, yes. So since they don't have the lifeboats, they got to use the life rafts, right? And um, there's pretty strong wind and these life rafts are inflatable, right? So, um, you know, you mm-hmm. take them out, if they inflate properly, they just sort of blow away. Yeah, and I should say, um, the Baltic is a level of cold that I feel like temperature doesn't quite... Like, just giving you the Fahrenheit or Celsius doesn't quite give you the sense of it, because there is also wind chill, and that's substantial. Um, it, it's it's very, very inhospitable. Um, just being immersed in it, fully clothed and everything, and trying to swim to one of these things that's blowing away is enough that you can get into it and you can die anyway. It, it, it's 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 not good. The water temperature was like 50 degrees, if that. Yes. Uh, yeah. And it's only, I believe, 160 people uh, uh, made it actually to the lifeboats. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, I, that, that's the thing. You can see it. it. It's like a series of hurdles where it's like, to get out of the corridors and then get off of the superstructure and then get into the life raft and then to survive in the life raft and each time there's a little attritive sort of bar on there that just kills a few more people and makes the total survivor count that much yeah. lower. Well, yeah, because you're running up an MC Escher ship in mm-hmm. 50 degree yeah. water. Yeah. yeah. No, no and, 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 and because they've lost power, you have to do this in the dark. Yes. Right, right. Yeah. So the lifeboats and the life rafts could easily accommodate 2,000 people, but the 250 or so people who made it to the promenade deck couldn't even get enough lifeboats or life rafts to blow up and not blow away to get even like a tenth of that amount, uh, you know, into the... Yeah, I, I mean, if you've seen these, there's a picture there, there isn't a good scale, but that's meant to fit like two dozen people, yeah. right? Uh, y- y- you need say, I don't know, six people at least to, like, unfold one of those and launch it. And to do that on a deck that is wet, it's dark, and then it's inclining all the time even more is almost impossible. It's amazing they got any launched at all. The rescue effort started a little late uh, because they screwed up the Mayday. The first ferry arrived at the location at 2.12, which was 22 minutes after the boat sank. Uh, they got there very quickly because the Baltic is a very busy shipping channel, um, but it's still, you know, mm. not not necessarily quick enough. Oh yeah, Hyper- hypothermia will kill you in Easy. ten minutes. Yeah. Easily. Um, yep. So if if you've been immersed all of that time, it, unless you're very lucky or very physically fit, you're you're dead. The the emergency was declared at two thirty. You know, so thirty eight minutes after. Right, Finnish rescue helicopters arrived at 3.05. I mean, see, this is this is the thing. That sounds so fast, right? And in practical terms, there isn't much that on shore you could have done better. It's just that the, the, the margin is so low there. Right, that... because you're talking about literal yeah. seconds. Yes. Like you're not, you're, not, yes. you're going to die in ten minutes once you get in the water. Yes. And even then, you said you're doing, it, like... doing all the shit in the dark. Yeah, it's, it's very much like if you've done a first aid course and you know CPR, uh, they'll tell you that it's, you know, brain death in, like, I don't know, four to ten minutes. Same sort of deal. Uh, it, it is absolutely that, that thin a margin. Yeah, not good. Uh, helicopters rescue 104 people. The ships rescue 34 people, even though they got there earlier because the heavy seas made it really difficult to get people out of the life rafts and into the various ships and ferries that showed up. Mm-hmm. Well, I, in both cases, you have to lower someone down to rescue people and then winch them back up. That's that's perversely easier in a helicopter, yeah. but still, like, still insane. Like, you have to send a guy in basically a wetsuit to, down on a on a on a rope and have him fish people out of this incredibly cold water. Um, yeah, they they winched open life rafts, just the one of the ferries, just straight into the sea, mm-hmm. and managed to uh, grab thirteen people that way. Wow! One of the the things that's insane to me is is that like a uh, helicopter landing in the dark in the Baltic is the safer yeah. option here. Yes, or is the quicker option at the very least. 
but they had to land on the ferries uh, and managed to save a good amount of people that way. 104, yeah. like you said. So 852 people drown or die of hypothermia in the water. Uh, not so good. A third of those who had escaped from the boat by the time the helicopters arrived. A third of the people who had escaped from it had died of hypothermia, mm-hmm. which is fucking nuts. Yeah. And, and again, there's like, there's not much room for improvement there. It's one of those things where the safety margin is either... It, it, the safety margin is making sure something like this does not happen. Because if it does, you just... That it's many pretty people much it, kind yeah. of die anyway. So, yeah. Uh, now, eventually... You know, so what happened here, right? Uh, after the ship has gone down, uh, they later salvage the visor and some forensic investigations determines how it, how it fell off. And also, how did no one notice it was going to fall off, right? So this visor mm-hmm. was not really visible from the bridge. They couldn't see what was going on. Which is like a, a habitual problem with Roro Ferries. Uh, that you can't see whether or not the door with the ramp on it is open or closed from the yeah bridge. which is and so you just set you, you just send the guy to tell you whether it's open or not in this case they send the same guy twice he doesn't come back the second time which is not a great yes sign. Not, not a good sign for the door being closed um the bow visor and ramp had been torn off at points that wouldn't trigger the open or latch for yes. the bridge hmm. and there was video monitoring of the ramp but you couldn't see the monitor from the conning station awesome because because they didn't consider the visor and its attachments critical items regarding ship safety. So that was also under-designed, which is super tight. It's the most, it's the most fucking West German thing I've ever heard. I, I feel like the way you design this thing is as a modification, right? You design a ferry, and then you think, okay, well, we, we need to put cars on this, so you retrofit it, and you think, oh, we'll put the visor on there, we'll put the safety systems for the visor and everything. But it's, it, it's not designed from the ground up to be this. Um, and so you end up with these these oversights, and we have this the most clear title drop of this podcast. Well, there's your problem. <laughs> there's your problem. Wait, was it not designed as a Roro ferry initially? Um, I think it was. I think uh, what I mean is in terms of just in terms of shipwrights. Oh. I think y- you don't develop this base of expertise for Roro ferries. You develop a base of expertise for. Baltic ferries, and then later you think, "Hey, can you stick a a, a thing okay, on this, yeah. and we'll we'll put up a, put out a new class of." And you say, "Sure, of course yeah. I can." Yeah, yeah. Technically, it's not safety critical because it's not the watertight portion. But it turned out when it broke, yeah, that pretty quickly broke the watertight portion too. Um, and of course, another thing is that even after there were these big bangs and loud noises, the crew were like, "We're gonna make schedule." They didn't slow down or try and take uh, any corrective safety uh, uh, yeah. doohickeys, and you know? <laughs> one thing that isn't in the Atlantic article, but is always worth asking, and I, I, I you know, the Herald of Free Enterprise is the obvious comparison. That's a, a British uh, Roro ferry that did exactly the same thing in the channel, um, is... How long have these guys been working for? When did they last take a break? Was it longer than 20 minutes? You know, things like that. Um, Because you don't get this kind of pressure for... As much as we talk about Soviet mentality or whatever, you don't get this pressure for timeliness or for targets from nowhere. There has to be someone from management pushing downwards saying, essentially, like, if you don't make this target, you know, that that's your job, right? And so that's... That's that's a safety issue, but it's almost never considered as one. Yeah, absolutely. There's also they were the crew was apparently unaware that the list uh, at all was being caused by water entering the vehicle deck. Apparently, they just didn't know. No one was saying anything for the bridge. Obviously, the alarm took way too long, and the crew apparently was just very passive, mm-hmm. which could all, which is very easily like it's 1 30 a.m i'm on the baltic sea i haven't slept in two days yeah and and, and we said we said earlier this is a crew of what 180 people yeah. there's no way that some some person who is like who suddenly is like okay i have to evacuate this corridor with i don't know 200 people in it who is not being spoken to by officers is gonna be like okay well this is this is what's happening I, I know this, despite the fact that I can't see anything, I don't have any windows, nobody's telling me anything, uh, that's that's going to give me the correct amount of urgency, or whatever. 
It's it's really grim, and I need another drink on this because Jesus. All right, uh, it's uh, that'll be four Maker's Marks consumed through this podcast. Please sponsor mm-hmm. us, Maker's Mark Distillery. I, I... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's like sponsoring uh, 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 an esports thing, except you know better. And I'm about halfway to the bottom of this box. So yeah, <laughs> no, this is this is fine. I'll be I'll be damned before I get a Skillshare uh, uh, sponsorship. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're just we're just shopping around for different bourbons. Like next week, it'll be uh, Buffalo Trace. Uh-huh. And then the week after, it'll be like Woodford Probably Reserve. Probably wild turkey. I only want wild turkey. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'm only trying to get that sweet, sweet Campari money. <laughs> so, you know, oh, please, here's, yeah. here's the thing, though. There's uh, as much as like there were obvious major things that went wrong. Of course, people want to talk about conspiracies, right? Yeah. Ah, okay. Oh hell yeah! Was, I yeah. am ready. Yeah. I'm ready. So, <laughs> Mothman. It was Mothman. I, it, it... it was the Jews. We did it. We did it. We'll get you. We'll it was, get you, it was, folks. It was. It was Mossad again. For some reason, oh, nobody can quite Yeah, full of, uh, full of uh, communist Nazis. The Mossad was going to get. <laughs> yeah. So. Mm. We're just at some point we're gonna do Korean Air Flight 007. So I'm just gonna be like, yeah, this is it. The Soviets shot it down with a missile. Did it happen several years after the dissolution of the Soviet Union? Yes. Is that gonna stop me? No. Um, yeah, Soviet strategic rocket forces shot down a ferry with a surface-to-air missile yeah. somehow. So um, there's a bunch of conspiracies about this sinking, right? Uh, so some guy who survived the sinking reported seeing a bunch of mysterious trucks with a military escort uh, being loaded on the ship just prior to them departing uh, Tallinn. I mean, yeah, shit, probably. It was what year was this? Uh, n- it was like ninety-four. 19- yeah. 94. Yeah, the, 94 is the prime year for all kinds of shady bullshit with, like, military trucks coming out of former Soviet countries and heading yeah. west. Sure, why not? I don't think it's necessarily connected, but... Yeah, it's, it's yeah, probably okay. full of uh, ex-Soviet military technology, you know, they, they have a... They gotta, they gotta ship out the engines, or ship out knowledge of how to make engines bigger and smokier and build heavier <laughs> armor... <laughs> You know? Just noisier, yeah. yeah. This is our, this is our secret technology on how to like defeat air protection more effectively. <laughs> well, much to the chagrin, of course, of uh, rednecks in the West and the uh, Cummins Diesel Corporation, the Soviets have always had us beat at rolling coal. I, I I don't know. For all I know, it was trucks full of AKs that ended up in that are right now in Syria. Uh, n- nobody mm-hmm. knows. But that that one's probably true. It just probably doesn't have anything to do with this. There had been uh, not explosive uh, military equipment aboard the ship, indeed, on the fourteenth and twentieth of September. Yeah, that uh, right. But according to the Swedish Ministry of Defense, uh, nothing was on board the day of the disaster. But, of course, the Swedish would say that, considering that they were helping to smuggle ex-Soviet arms in their never-ending war against Norway. I, I, uh, I, like that, I like that they just ship it once a week. You know, this is my this is my yeah. weekly subscription to uh, <laughs> yeah. 80,000 pounds of AK-47s. It's, it's like Dollar Shave, yeah. Oh, good. My AN-94s are here. <laughs> <laughs> Getting I just, real mad I just, at whatever Swedish yeah. go puff because they're taking too long with I, their AI. I just love the idea that like what happened to all of the former Soviet Union's like loose ICBMs was like essentially a like an ICBM of the month club. <laughs> and the CIA was just waiting in Stockholm and was just like uh, again <laughs> You know they're never gonna ship you the Tsar Bomba in in the ICBM of the month club. <laughs> No. Well, the, the the thing is, if 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 you if you subscribe for two years, you can assemble the Zarbombi yourself. <laughs> so. I'm so excited to get my R36, my R36 mm. knockdown kit. <laughs> so, just assembly in my backyard in Stockholm. <laughs> Some folks think the ship was sunk with torpedoes by a NATO submarine to prevent whatever was being smuggled out with those trucks. From reaching oh, Swedish that's customs, stupid. yeah, that's stupid. NATO owned 
everything coming out of the USSR at that point. There's nobody else who could have done that. If if we get to the point where there's something that was clearly a NATO conspiracy, that's going to be a future bonus episode on the Eustaka massacre. <laughs> uh, th- this thing? No, yeah. come on. No, I got it. I got it. Sweden, as far as I know, they're not uh, a NATO member. So what happened was that uh, Sweden sank the submarine. Oh, in shit, order because yeah, they have those old diesel yep, subs. Yep, yep, mm. and in order to prevent the proliferation of whatever Hunt for Red October bullshit, uh, Sweden, you know, finally getting revenge. Wow. Thank sank, you, thank you Sweden. Yeah. yeah. Neutrality wins out, finally. Yes. So another theory is that, you know, whatever they were smuggling, the smugglers decided they didn't want to... Uh, they didn't want to smuggle it anymore. They were going to get found out and they were going to, you know, o- try and open the bow themselves and just shove their trucks out. <laughs> they just didn't want to play. They just yeah, didn't just, want to pay yeah. duty. Yeah, just like well, when, 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 this, when you're man. getting chased by the cops and it's world, world world's wildest police videos and you just roll down the window and you throw the drugs out, but with an ICBM. Yes. We'll that, come back for it later. We'll come yeah, back for that, it later. That, that seems. That seems Other people think the trucks were filled with explosives, which done blowed up. Uh, but it didn't done blowed up. It done, it done sunk. sunk. Yeah. Yeah. But what we do know is that Swedish authorities have thoroughly protected the wreck site, so that no diving or real investigation is allowed. And they tried to cover up the whole wreck with concrete rather than salvage and investigate it. Right. Okay, that is true. that's yeah. weird. That's that's some radiation shit because I can't think of you don't cover a wreck with explosives, uh, a wreck with concrete because of explosives. Yeah. and you don't cover a wreck with concrete because of uh, I don't know notebooks about how to make diesel engines smokier. <laughs> but you do cover a wreck with concrete if you have like I don't know CBRN shit in there and you don't want it to leak. Yeah. So they they managed to put down a a bunch of gravel over the wreck. They couldn't mm-hmm. finish the job since families of the survivors got really mad about it. They were like, what, what are you doing? Hey, why, why are you dumping two tons of gravel on my yeah, uncle? Yeah, exactly. Especially because it's in international waters. Yes. Uh-huh. Mm. I, I mean, this, mm. this absolutely seems plausible to me on the basis that my general theory of conspiracies is that everyone is corrupt and everyone is incompetent at the same yes. time. That's true. It, it absolutely jibes with that to be like, yeah, we're we're shipping some stuff that we don't want anyone to know about on this thing, and then independently, by complete coincidence, these idiots sank it, <laughs> and now we have to clean up the mess. Yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, a bunch of people's nuke of the month yeah, club yeah. got a uh, w- w- is now at the bottom of the Baltic Sea. Yeah. What do you call customer service for this? <laughs> Yeah, pre- pretty much, pretty much. There's there's there's, there's, so, there's somebody's there's somebody's crates full of ricin or Ebola or I don't know nuclear warheads down there. So the good news for Roz and I, but uh, sucks to be sucks to suck Alice, mm. is that the the Estonia Agreement 1995 is a treaty between Sweden, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Poland, Denmark, Russia, and the United Kingdom for oh. some reason. Declaring hmm. sanctity over the site and prohibiting their citizens That's from even approaching the wreck. The good news is that it's only binding for citizens of the countries that are signatories. So, Roz, we're going I, to the Baltic. I, I, I don't, I don't want to go to the Baltic. I'm... That's how we're going to spend the Patreon money. I can't say anything. All I can say is it's very strange for a country that does not border the Baltic, but that does invest heavily in submarines. Uh, and also smuggling stuff to be interested in this in any sort of formal sense. I cannot say anything else, but you two can speculate about why that might be, so please do. Uh, I will. There were uh, there were reports uh, out of New Statesman that lab tests on debris recovered illegally from the exploded off-bow uh, yielded trace evidence of a deliberate explosion which they allege was concealed by the Swedish, British, and Russian governments to cover up an intelligence operation smuggling military hardware. So congratulations, Alice. You're a party to all that shit. Amazing. Oh yeah, I, lo- I love to be the beneficiary of Meanwhile, that. the U.S. has clean hands here. <laughs> yeah, for once. We found the one thing that the U.S. didn't do. Yeah, we had no idea. We didn't think it. So I, I look forward to not appearing on any future episodes of this because I, like, fracture my hyoid bone. Well, that's another interesting one is apparently public domain photos of the ship just keep disappearing. 
like off the internet. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. Maybe they'll take down the podcast. Yeah, I mean, shit. The wreck this is, is still thing. monitored by the Norwegian Navy, apparently. This is the thing, right? As far as every other conspiracy goes, like, I believe the official uh, 9-11 narrative on the basis that if there was a cover-up of more than the most superficial thing, it would be this incompetent. <laughs> uh, you would Google 9-11 and nothing would come up, right? Yeah. Like, that's that's the sort of level we're pitched at here. We'll have to do a 9-11 episode at some point. Oh, that's true, yeah. Uh, did jet fuel, whether or, can, whether it can or not, melt steel beams? Uh, you know what uh, can melt, melt steel beams? Uh, is it being hit by an airplane? Paper. Mm. Yeah, paper burns yeah, real hot. Yeah, paper burns hot, real hot. Turns out. Hmm. Hmm. Of course, that'll have to wait, because our next episode will, of course, be on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Of course. Yes. Yes. Long-awaited episode. It's going to be real exciting. Um... Yeah, we're sorry for the delay, yeah, folks. We, yeah. We've been we're really proud of the what we're putting out next week. Yeah. yeah talk about the um the possible CIA involvement, mm-hmm. Mothman uh, sightings any, any in the area. Of things. Uh, uh, yeah, hundred uh, percent. I mean, you know, before we do any of these, I get a big cork board and I draft and I pin all of the Mothman sightings in the vicinity. Uh, very few Mothmen in in the Baltic Sea, but. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know that we can draw a conclusion from that, other than that Mothman's involvement remains unconfirmed. Yes. Yeah, most Mothman activity mm. is concentrated in West Virginia, but that just might be that, you know, he's he's on break there, so he's not so worried about being clandestine. Absolutely. It's it, it's it, it's a busman's holiday, yeah. right? You, you cause engineering disasters in your home, and then you go on vacation and you find out that you have to cause an engineering disaster there. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it it's sad, really. And what we need to do is we need to radicalize Mothman, and we need to get Mothman to join DSA and <laughs> unionize and to agitate for better work. I conditions. believe there should be a cryptids union. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes. All right, so we will get out to New Jersey and we will work on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so start start organizing cryptids under like the Teamsters. <laughs> Teamsters are already basically yeah. cryptid, yeah. so yeah, we're halfway yeah. there. Yeah. Jimmy Hoffa is a cryptid. Uh, that that is true. Yeah, yeah. it's. I, I mean, he's kind of a reverse cryptid in that Mothman prevent. I mean, Mothman causes parts of like road infrastructure to collapse. Jimmy Hoffa, being part of a foundation, actually prevents the collapse Ooh. of. Uh, I don't know <laughs> an overpass on like I ninety five. So. Uh, Shea Stadium, right? Yeah, possibly. Well, Mythbusters confirmed he was not there. Yeah, that's what they yeah, want you to true, think. It's true, it's true. You're always in our hearts, Jimmy. Mythbusters in on the conspiracy cannot be trusted. Yeah. Possible Mothman. Sure. I mean, the, the one with the mustache, kind of, he has something of the Mothman about it's true. Him. All right. Uh, I'm going to do a couple of announcements here. Uh, so this should be the first episode on our brand new, our own YouTube channel. Also, it should we should mm. have... A proper podcasting setup at this point where you can ha- have an RSS feed, but you don't get the slides. Uh, we have a Patreon now, or we will by the time this goes up. Uh, un- unlike on my channel where it's $1, it's, it's going to be a-, a $2 tier here. Yeah, because we have we have to split it between three yes. people. Uh, so, you- so we need that extra dollar. We're also going to have a Twitter account, because I'll yes. do that. And uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna tweet things about Mothman and things. Of and that uh, nature. if I could also get access to that, so I can get oh uh, yeah, yeah just real salty replies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll I'll just read the pu- the password for it live on air, and we can just like yeah, total chaos. Very into it. That's what I always want. I always support chaos. Yeah. This is the Twitter for everyone. We democratize the Twitter. <laughs> It's, 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 we, we are doing democratic centralism under the leadership of Abdullah Salman. It would just it would just turn into like just this most absurd, incredibly pro Assad um, uh, account like immediately. <laughs> um, Simultaneously pro every side in the Syrian yeah. civil war at once. So pro Assad, pro Turkey, pro YPG, pro America for some yeah. reason. <laughs> so. I'm ready. I'm so ready. on this Patreon, you're going to get one bonus episode a month. Our first bonus episode will be on Grover House. So um, mm. hopefully 
coming soon. I guess we got to schedule that. Tell the children what Grover House is really quickly in case they... Because some... we're, we're old and some of them won't know. Oh, God. It's true. Grover House is from an ancient place called the Something Awful it was, Forums. It was terrible. Where one of the moderators um, was trying to build an addition to his house and chronicled it in a forum thread. Um, and it ended up with him... He, his the house didn't pass inspection, so he got himself <laughs> certified as an inspector in his town in order to pass the work with the city. So yeah, it, it's, it, it's wild. It is wild incredible. And wonderful yes. story, you absolutely yes. have to. You have to like g give us two bucks for this because that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's that's one fifth the price of signing up for a something awful forums account. That's true, and and I think they give you like it's like ten bucks for an archive yes. account to go and read the actual thread. So you're you're making insane Supporting savings. Supporting us for twenty months, excuse me, ten months is cheaper than. Signing up for a something awful forums archives account. Take that, <laughs> Richard Lotax Kianka. Yes, yeah. <laughs> directly <laughs> like the worst punch that 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 Lotax has suffered since Uva Ball. Dear Richard, oh, that's right. <laughs> suck my dick, Lotax. I paid. I paid you like <laughs> thirty bucks since those <laughs> I am excited to talk about the basement pool thread. <laughs> everybody, look, there's, I should say this, everybody that you like or dislike on the internet now, whose name you know, either started on Something Awful or 4chan, and I, I, I feel like we are all Something Awful here. Yes. And that, yeah, it, that, that, that trauma that we carry with us has led us to the podcast you are listening to today. Never go on Reddit. Never, ever, 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 ever go on Reddit. Except for um, uh, OSHA. That's that's a good subreddit. That's funny. Uh, All right. Um, well, that's shit. I'm gonna finish the yeah. bottles today. <laughs> All right. So that's uh, fifty minutes or so. Uh, anyone got anything to pitch before we go? Ooh, listen to Trash Future. We are on uh, trashfuture.podbean.com, I believe. Um, or just, you know, Google us or on the uh, on whatever app you use to get your podcast. I believe it's also www.gettingyourdicksucked.com. Yes, that's true. That That is genuinely, no joke, a, a multimedia project that we're trying to launch, that our, our fearless <laughs> leader Riley is trying to launch. The, the the gist is we're trying to do a serious news site whose name is guessingyourdicksuck.com with no jokes in it apart from the name because that was the <laughs> last the last name available was guessingyourdicksuck.com. Uh, so help listen to Trash Future support us in that aim. Double yes. goal. Mm. Uh, I guess the only thing I have to pitch is listen to this podcast that you just listened to. And your actual your uh, other and the, watch my, it, your actual, actual YouTube, YouTube channel. Videos. Yeah, because yes. this won't be on that. Yeah. You have you have to pitch that yeah, separately. Yeah, that's a good yes. point. Yeah. Well, well, listen to my watch my YouTube channel where I talk about cities and socialism and stuff like that. Uh and yeah, make you play jokes. some kind of video game like a fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I have to finish Disco Elysium tonight. I yeah. I was gonna play some Minecraft probably. Uh, wrap this up. I'm William Anderson. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Old Man Anderson. Uh, it's really just gonna be me getting pissed off at people who are dumb as shit in uh in our Twitter comments. Mm -hmm. uh, and also just uh yeah go to the videos and then watch idiots fucking embarrass themselves in front of the whole world by <laughs> tweeting dumb transphobic shit and they're getting dunked on by like 30 people Duh, who's 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 the it's... english guy like first first of all scottish yeah. and second of yeah. all go yeah. all bad comments will be go on twitter and you'll be mocked and friendly reminder that crimes against turfs are yes. crimes <laughs> All right. All right. Awesome. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Uh, bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everybody.